So I've come in and I've attached this thread to the shank of a streamer hook just to give us kind of a big platform to practice some of this stuff on. Uh, one of the materials that I use a lot of is Montana Fly Company's Sexy Floss. So if I was going to tie this in for split tails, for example, on a stonefly nymph, I could come in and I could hold a piece of it here and try to tie it in and a piece over here and try to tie it in. But it's a lot easier if I just take this thread and come over the top of it, fold that sexy floss right over the top of the thread. And then now I have this set up and this thread's a guideline for me. That sexy floss is going to go directly to where that thread strand comes off the hook shank. There's no risk of any left to right movement on this. So when I go, I'm going to catch this over the shank, take two or three wraps. If I cant this toward you guys so you can see, if I put any downward pressure on this sexy floss, that hook shank is going to want to part and come through the middle. And so all I have to do then is stick the nose of my bobbin in, walk it back, and I'm going to get a piece of that tail fiber on each side of the hook shank set up the way that I want it to. Another really helpful thing here with this thread guideline concept is just tying in legs. So if I bring in another strand of the sexy floss here, where I have my bobbin, if we look at this as a 360 degree circle around the hook shank, wherever I place that bobbin in that 360 degree circle dictates on which side, top or bottom of the shank that material is going to land. And so if I say, okay, I'm going to use these sexy floss, I'm going to fold it over the thread again, and I want these legs to land on the far side of the hook. All I have to do is take my thread in the rotation over to that side. And when I slide it down my guideline, that sexy floss is on the opposite side of the hook shank. So when I come and I tie this in, I take a wrap or two and I let that loose. Now my legs are already set up on that opposite side of the hook shank. So just remember wherever you are in that 360 degrees, that dictates on which side, top or bottom of the hook shank it's going to land. Uh, if I come forward here a little bit, I bring in a little piece of parapost material. So I'm going to tie a parachute fly. You can use the exact same concept here. You can fold that over the top, slide it down the hook. If I come in my rotation directly above the hook shank, I slide that down to the hook shank, I can catch it, and it's exactly where I want it to be on top of the hook shank where I want to secure it. So pretty handy in terms of that. Uh, even with bigger stuff, streamer patterns, if I bring in oh, a little clump, this is some of that Senulous Predator wrap. So if I'm going to tie in the belly of a streamer, I could come in, I could hold it in place and try to tie it, uh, but similar concept whether I go over the top or whether I go over the bottom. If I simply fold that over the thread, slide that down. If I want that on the underside, I just take my rotation in 360, I come below the hook shank, secure it at that point, and it's locked in on the bottom of the hook shank.